Hello and welcome to some extra coverage from Club 100 Racing of our recent sprint round at the Ella Park Raceway near Beckles in Suffolk. Now don't worry this is not one of the filmed rounds, there are no cameramen employed here. Indeed our only cameraman of any kind in this Premier Class final is Baby Prem driver Steve Brown who kindly provided his helmet camera footage. Coming into round two, Baby Prem driver Anwar Burrell smith led the overall championship with his win in the main final at Butmore Park. And Anwar has extended his lead over last year's champion Ian Blake with a second place in today's pre-final behind race winner Matt Brooks. His fastest laps in the pre-final gives Anwar pole position for this main trophy final. Stuart Martin on the front row with him, Chris Hansen, Stephen Hicks on row two, J. Elliott, Jonathan Lissiter on row three, one of the pre-season favourites, Parvina Jar and reigning champion Ian Blake start on row four. Steve Brown and pre-final winner Matt Brooks start on row five of this 21-car grid. Well, here we go then, Barul Smith controlling the pace. The lights are green and we're racing at Park. Down to turn one. And running out wide, and Chris Hansen has come through to the lead as Burrell Smith has to slot into second place. Hicks looking to the inside, going into turn two, and he's through as well. This is a 12-lap final, and it all opens up for Steve Brown. Trying to get on the bumper of Anwar Burrell Smith, now running side by side with Jay Elliott. Jonathan Lissiter on our left, getting a better run into turn five. Flat through there, any kind of lift into six. Not really on the brakes over the hump. Into turn seven, Lissiter went to cover, streaming out through turn eight, it's a flat out kink. Down to turn nine, the hairpin. And it's Hansen leading Steve Hicks into turn ten. Burrell Smith in third, Stuart Martin under pressure from Jonathan Lissiter and Jay Elliott in the white. And it looks as though Brown's beginning to get dropped. Lissiter takes a look over his shoulder, so does Brown. That's Lee Clackett trying to come through down the inside. Brown leaves himself about six inches to a foot of space. He's clear of Clackett, and he's soon caught up with Lissett, who's fighting to find a way past Jay Elliott. Into turn four. Slight correction on the wheel, and here they come. Back towards the pit complex. 21 carts streaming through in Premier Class. And it's Hanson, Hicks, Brule Smith, Martin getting away from Lissett. Fighting all the way through the field. It's definitely four away at the front. Listen to trying to get across. Elliot Brown, Clackett, Ian Blake. Palm Vina Jars had a nightmare first lap. He's four from the back. Down in 18th place. Back on board with Brown. Still looking at the back of G. Elliot. Closing in through turn three. Trying to set him up for four. Well, you can see how narrow Elliot's gone to cover that one off. And Lissiter is getting away and moving across to the leading quartet to make it a group of five. Here they come. Hansen went in deep to turn seven there and has set himself up for an attack from Hicks down at the hairpin. And Hicks goes through. Can he hold him? Hansen is down to second. And Martin's trying to find a way past Anwar Barul Smith again. So it's Stephen Hicks out front. Burrell Smith takes a look over his shoulder and it's definitely five away at the front now. And the fight is going on. Burrell Smith through to second. He overtakes Hansen. And Hansen's going to be in trouble down to turn three. Martin goes through. And it looks as though Hansen's chance is gone. It's a 12 lap final. He's going to have to regroup and try and come again. And that's allowing Jay Elliott to get across. And we're back to a line of six. Steve Brown still under pressure from Lee Clackett, Ian Blake, and Matt Brooks. Indeed, it's all coming back together. Elliot now looking down the inside of Lissiter, and he goes through. So rounding out lap four, it's Stephen Hicks leading, but he's under pressure from Anwar Burrell Smith as they go over start finish. He shows him the outside down into turn one, and the crocodile follows him behind. And Hicks is running deep, and Burrell Smith has got the lead on the exit of turn one. Was able to cut back tighter and goes through. And now Martin has moved straight onto the bumper of Stephen Hicks. A chance now, perhaps, for Hansen to get back in touch. And it doesn't look as though Baby Prem Steve Brown can live with the pace of the leaders when they get their heads down and go. 
So it's Barul Smith, Hicks, Martin, Hansen, Elliott, Lissiter. And it looks as though Brown's under pressure here, coming down into hairpin. He hangs on though, ahead of Lee Clackett and Ian Blake. Lissiter going back through on J. Elliott. Elliott doesn't fight it too hard. He's conscious of Brown behind and trying not to lose touch with Chris Hansen. Penley board out there for someone. Over start finish on Robo Mick. Double apex right hander turns two and three. Easy defense into four. This is all about setting you up for turn seven. And it looks as though Hansen is closing in on Stephen Hicks. Now, will he chance it down the inside into seven? Well, he wasn't too clean through turn six, and he's not close enough. Barul Smith leads down to the hairpin. Elliot takes a look over his left shoulder, but it, actually it's Lee Clackett who should be looking over the right one because through on the inside goes Ian Blake into turn nine. That moves him up into eighth place. His next target will be Steve Brown if he can hold off Clackett. Clackett takes a look over his shoulder at Matt Brooks. And then it's Pete O'Connor and Jack Harding rounding out the top 12. And then there's a gap to 13th place. The rest of the field being led by Darren Teal. It's three away at the front. Hanson unable to go with him, and Martin's looking to the inside of turn five. That's a risky move. One for the brave. He can't do it, but he's staying on the bumper down into turn seven. And it looks as though Barul Smith's got a cart length now on Stephen Hicks. The fight on behind Ian Blake. The fight for eighth place. Brown trying to get on the bumper of Jay Elliott, but just being kept at half a cart length. Here comes Teal. Behind him, Lee Hackett, Palmvi Najjar, Freddie Gallagher. Slow start to this final for the Jennings brothers. And Ray Norris sandwiched between them. On to lap eight now. We're two thirds into this final. And it's still too close to call. Brown has lost a car length on Jay Elliott. Up front, it's still fairly tight. Barul Smith still got a car length on Stephen Hicks, who's doing his best to hold off Stuart Martin. Gap developing to Chris Hansen. Jonathan Lissiter is closing on Chris Hansen in fourth place. Matt Brooks has got ahead of Lee Clackett, so he moves through to ninth place. Clackett down to tenth. Pete O'Connor and Jack Harding trying to close in, not able to put a pass in. Brown's had a better run through turns two and three. Didn't look at mid corner. He's got a good run off turn three and he's closer than he's been for a while. But once again through turn five, Jay Elliott pulls out half a cart length. And Brown's not close enough at the hairpin, turn seven. Putting turn eight. Well, that tyre barrier's been moved. Down the inside of Stephen Hicks there. Stuart Martin moves into second place. Now, can he do anything about Anwar Barul-Smith? Battles down the field here. Battle for 16th place. Scott Martin forcing a pass on Freddie Gallagher. Running him out wide. That's not very polite. And the gesture indicates the same. And it's given... Paul Jennings a run on Scott Martin, down into turn one and he's through and Gallagher sticks his nose in as well. And Rin Norris is joining this to make it a four-way fight for 16th. Well, three wide into turn two doesn't work and it's let Jennings get away. So Scott Martin is hung on to 17th. More contact, Rin Norris, Freddie Gallagher. Gallagher's gone through and so Stephen Jennings. So down in 20th place then for Ray Norris, only James Burton behind him. So the forward, that battle for 6th place, and Steve Brown's finally got an opportunity to throw it down the inside of Gialli. It's a lovely move in turn 10. Now can he hold him off? Down into turn 1, and Ian Blake is closing in. It's a three-way fight over 6th place. And Brown's held the spot out of turn 1. Anwar Brule Smith's got a couple of cart lengths on Stuart Martin. Similar margin over Stephen Hicks. Gap developing even more now to Chris Hansen, who's have to busy himself 
with hanging on to fourth place and holding off Jonathan Listener in fifth. We're a lap and a half from the finish. Has Stuart Martin got anything left for Anwar Burrell Smith, who appears to have a degree of control in this final? Down the inside, Blake on J. Elliott, and he moves through to seventh place. Decisive move by the champion. Picking up points could be crucial later in the year. Darren Teal's had a quiet race in 13th place ahead of Palm Vienagers who had a bit of a mare Lee Hackett now coming under pressure from Paul Jennings but we're on the final lap now and Barul Smith appears to have this one in the bag there's a big battle going on though down at the bottom of the top 10 position 7 currently held now by Matt Brooks Lee Clackett behind Ian Blake in 9th Jay Elliott down to 10th I can tell you John Lissiter has got ahead of Chris Hansen and has moved into fourth place. Final few corners, and is this a chance for Pete O'Connor or Jack Harding to pick up some cheap places in the last couple of corners? Out of the last corner, Stuart Martin isn't close enough. Anwar Barul Smith will take his second win of the season. Ahead of Stuart Martin, gap to Stephen Hicks, finishing third. Now in the pits, once again with Anwar Barul Smith. Did you think you were going to win that one? Um. I thought I had a chance, yeah, for sure, but uh, I mean, I turned up today thinking, I would, again, like, like last time, not thinking I was going to do very much. But yeah, it's been a good, it's been a good day. Um, it started off a bit not so great in the heats. It was a bit of a, a few dodgy races, a bit, a bit of contact to put me out of contention, and then, um, and then the first the pre-final was a nightmare, absolute nightmare. I um, I started sixth and dropped down a place, and then next thing I knew, I was almost taking someone out, and then I had to give the position back, and then. I found myself suddenly in ninth, and I thought I've, I've got a lot to do here, but managed to claw it back and put in a good lap time. And as for the main final, well, I just really got my head down and thought, as long as I finish, you know, in the front five, then I, yeah, it was good points for the day. And fortunately, I managed to get back into the lead early doors and just hold it to the end. So that no, was good. I really, a good day. Really enjoyed it. Didn't see it coming again. I know you're not going to believe me, but I honestly, didn't. Um, and yeah, it's good points for the championship, so I can't complain. No, I, I want to know because I thought that you were either had a measure of control out front in that last one. Were you having to push really hard or were you, were you in control? Um, yeah, a little bit of both, to be honest. I, I, felt, I felt good. Once I got into the lead and broke the lead, I felt like I had enough pace to stay there. Um, but at the same time, whilst I was comfortable in that sense, I knew that any small mistake they were going to be on me because I only maybe had a cart length gap at, at, at the best of times. So I thought, yeah, no, I'm comfortable, but I can't put a foot wrong. So I just kept pushing and pushing and hoping I could eat the gap out a bit more. So, yeah, a little bit of both. But, you know, I got the job done in the end and, you know, thank God it's over. <laughs>